right, so guys, essentially, like I said, we've done number patterns, so I'm not going to go on too much about what is a number pattern, how do we identify it, we know, um, but we are going to work with number patterns and answer some number pattern questions, because honestly, if you can do number patterns, you can do relationships, which means that you can do graphs or functions. All right, so we know that a number pattern describes a relationship between two variables or two values. Often those variables or values are represented with an X and a Y. That's our input and our output. Sometimes some of you do use a slightly different notation. Sorry, I don't know what's happening. Slightly different notation where you use N and TN. That's absolutely fine. But essentially, we have two variables and there is some sort of mathematical relationship between those two. All right. And that's essentially what a number pattern is. Why it's important for us to see number patterns and understand that re these relationships exist with variables is because when we start graphing particularly the relationships, we can start making predictions about certain events that may happen. So for example, if you think of like a business, okay, and you start to plot a graph of a business's profits over the last five years. As you start to get more and more options, as you start to get more and more information, you can start to make a prediction about whether or not a business will be profitable in the future. Okay, so by having these relationships and by knowing what the relationship is, predictions can start being made about the relationship. And there's lots and lots and lots of examples that we can use in order to sort of put a real life aspect on this that's just one of them but essentially what we need to get in our heads is that we can start to make predictions once we know what relationship exists okay there seems to be a lot of audio issues going on so can i just get a thumbs up in the chat if you can hear and your audio is absolutely fine um if you can't hear me properly put a thumbs down You've been told how to deal with both audio and screen sharing issues. So if you can't hear and if you can't see the screen, you need to log out and you need to log back in. Um, if that's still not working, you need to, in terms of video, you need to unpin and then repin my screen. That might help. If you're still struggling, then you need to send your lender or myself a message. In terms of yeah. audio, you need to make sure you've connected to the correct audio option in terms of like your output speakers, whether or not you've got headphones in, that's what we mean when we say the correct audio option. Okay, so it seems like everyone is okay. Some of you are just struggling to connect to the correct audio option. So yeah, it also to... could be network where they are because we can hear you perfectly fine. Okay, so those of you struggling, you need to just check that you've connected to the correct audio option. So if you've got headphones and you can't be connected to a speaker, you need to be connected to your headphones. That sort of issue. Otherwise, just try logging out and logging back in. That might solve the issue. Alrighty. So we're going to have a look at some number patterns. We're going to try some by ourselves. We're going to try some together. But like I said, if you can do number patterns, you can pretty much do relationships and functions. And thank you guys for also giving me thumbs up in the chat. It is helpful. So thank you very much. All right. So guys, let's have a look at this first example here. We have got a pattern that is three, five, seven, nine, eleven, and it keeps going. Okay. So those three little dots at the end means that my number pattern just keeps going. I haven't told you where it ends. It goes on to infinity. So what I want you to do, sorry, it's all mucky attacking me here. What I want you to do for me is I want you in the chat to answer this first question that I've asked. So in words, so just use words right now. I want you to describe this number pattern for me. But it's a terrible attempt at trying to highlight something. So let's try that again. I want you to describe this number pattern for me. So in words, use your words, describe what's happening here. So am I multiplying each term to get the next? Am I subtracting, dividing, adding? What am I doing in this number pattern? And I want to see your answers on the chat.
Nice, it's grade eight, it's very nice. Okay, so this is one way that we can ask you to um, interpret a relationship. We can ask you to describe in words what is happening in our pattern. And so it's exactly what you said. All we're doing is that from one term to the next, we are adding two in order to get our next term. Okay, so that is essentially the verbal or the literal description of our pattern. So a lot of you are describing it very, very nicely. There was one description that I quite liked somewhere now, of course I've lost it. So we add to, to the current term to get the next term. Okay, now guys, I've now introduced a word here, which is the word term. So when we talk about a number pattern, we get terms of that sequence. These values, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, these are our terms of our sequence or of our pattern. Okay. Now we could also call these our output values. And I'm using this description because someone in the uh, in a mandala used in the chat the in the words input and output. And those are going to be very important terms that we use. So well done on bringing those up. These are what we call our output values. Okay. Which means that in order to get an output, we have to have an input value. Now the input value would be our position of our term. So whether it is the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, blah, 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 blah. These are our input values. Okay, so what you need to be very careful of is we're not adding two to the input value. So if I was doing that, we have our first input value of one. And as I'm saying, that's just gonna work here, but it's not gonna work for all of them, so bear with me. If I add two to one, I do get three. But now if I take my next input value of two and add two to it, I'm not getting five. And so what you need to be very careful is when you do start to describe your rules and your relationships, just be very careful that you do know what input and output is and what the relationship is. We can find a rule, and we'll eventually start doing this, where we look at how we get from the input to the output. But right now, if we just describe the pattern in general, we're adding two to the term we currently have in order to get our next term. Right, we also have what we call input and output values. And like I say, these are gonna become more important as we go on, that your input and output values are essentially two different things. Your input is what position your term is, is the first one, the second one, the third one. That would be your input value. And remember, we can use X to describe input. Your output would be the value of the actual pattern. So what are the numbers in the pattern? And this, we use a Y sometimes to represent. All right, so if we now have a look at the next question, which I see a lot of you have skipped ahead to, I'm asking you for the next three terms. Okay, so I've given you the three, five, seven, nine, eleven. What I am now asking you for is to give me the next three terms in the sequence. Now, because we've described the pattern, all we need to do is we need to continue adding two. So we'll take eleven, which is our current term. We're going to add two in order to get our next term, which is thirteen. This is our new current term, we're gonna add two, and that's gonna give us our next term, which is 15. And if we just continue adding two, we're going to get the subsequent terms in our pattern. Now guys, a really important thing here is because I only asked you for the next three terms, please only give me the next three terms. It seems like such a silly thing, but if I only ask you for the next three, that is all I care about. All right, so I don't care that the term after 17 is 19 and then 21, et cetera, et cetera. I don't care about that. I just care about the next three. So always read your questions very carefully to make sure that you are actually answering the question that I've given to you. 
All right, so what I want you guys to try, because clearly we're on it, is question B here. So there's another number pattern for you. One, five, nine, 13, 17. What are we doing? So I want you to describe the pattern for me. So I want the first question answered, describe the pattern. And then I want you to answer the second question for me, which is asking you, and that's going to be way too dark. I'm asking you to give me the next three terms in this sequence. So very much the same thing what we just did. I want you to go, ooh, <laughs> I want you to try this next one for me. So describe the pattern. What are we doing? How do we get from one term to the next? And then give me the next three terms. Only want the next three. Okay, so let's give it a try. I'm like that. I'm seeing it coming in the chat already. Well done. And guys, try to do it like Nelson's just um, put there on the chat. Give me description and the next all in one go. Sorry, I just apparently muted myself for whatever reason in life. Right, remember, if you've got any questions or any concerns, put them in the chat. I've got the chat open. I see everything coming through. So if you're stuck with anything, just let me know. You can also send a direct message to myself or Yulenda. And we can help you. Nice, great eights. Hey, nice guys. Okay, let's have a look. So I'm just going to make this bigger. I'll make it smaller just now and we can then take screenshots just because there is something I want to chat about here. If we're going to figure out what's happening in this pattern, we need to see how we're getting from one term to the next. The same thing that we did earlier, right? So we can see that if I add four to the current term that I have, I'm going to get the next term. So the current term of five, if I add four, I get nine. If the current term of nine, I add four, I get 13. So we can see that we're adding four essentially each time. So in our description, we add four to the current term to get the next term. Oops. Okay, so nice and easy, nothing too tricky there. The next question asks us to give the next three terms. So also nice and easy. I've already given you <clears throat> the first, what have I given you? The first five, all the way up to 17. But now we can just keep adding four in order to get our next term. So we would get 21, 25, 29. Now that's it. I haven't asked you for any more than that. So you just give me the next three. And that's that, <clears throat> sorry. Now, there's something I just wanna point out here, guys. Describing your pattern and giving a rule for your pattern are two different things. Okay, so if I'd asked you to give a rule for this pattern, It is not as simple as just saying X plus four. Okay, and this is what I was saying earlier. Whoops, 
help if I could spell pattern here. All right, so if we are giving a rule, this is where we have y equals and then some rule in terms of x. Sometimes we use tn equals and then some rule in terms of n. All right, so this is now where we need to think a little bit carefully about how we are, how we're getting from our input to our output. So when I ask you for a rule, it's how do we go from input to output? As I'm writing my water bottles in my way, from the input value to the output value. Now, what we need to remember is that our input value, which is represented by x, are our positions of our terms. So we would have, let's try this again, our first term, our second term, our third term, our fourth term, our fifth term, et cetera, et cetera. Y is then the values of my pattern. So the values of my sequence. So X is all my positions, two, three, four, five, et cetera, et cetera. Y are the values of the terms. So in this case, my Y values would be as I gave them to you earlier. And so we now need to ask, what am I doing to this X value here at the top to get to the Y value? I'm clearly not adding four, right? Because if I take my first X value of one and I add four, I don't get one. If I take my X value of two and I add four, I don't get five. And so it's not a simple case of just taking the description and putting it into a rule. And so we need to be very careful that we do actually take note of what the question's asking. A description and a rule are two different things. Okay, now the trick when you are trying to find the rule for any pattern is that whatever you have decided you're adding or subtracting each time is the coefficient to x. So whatever we add or subtract to get one term to the next. And I know we've done this all before, and I know I've written this all down before, but it's important to re revise this. Now remember, a coefficient is the number in front of our variable. It's the number we're timesing with x. And so here, we have already decided that we know that we're adding four each time. So that addition of four becomes my coefficient. So, oopsie daisies, I'm running out of space here. Okay, let's try that again. We will have y is equal to four x. Now we need to double check what I maybe need to add or subtract to get the output. So here's my x value. If I take this and I say four times x, so four times one, I get four. But the answer I want is one. So how do I go from four to one? Well, I subtract three. Let's just double check with the other x value. So four times two, that gives me eight, but I want five. So I subtract three. And so this tells me that my rule, the algebraic rule for this number pattern is y is equal to 4x minus three. You don't have to use that. You could have said tn is equal to 4n minus three. That's absolutely fine as well. But guys, really importantly, and again, we have done this, but really importantly, remember that your description and your rule are two different things. You describing the pattern is just telling me how you go from one output to the next output. The rule is linking the input and the output together and coming up with some algebraic equation or algebraic rule that describes our pattern. It's a very, very important difference. And that's why I'm saying again, it's very important that we read our questions carefully so that we're not actually giving the wrong bit of information according to what's been asked of us. Right, so I'm gonna just make that a bit smaller for you to take a screenshot. 
So take your screenshots, guys. If you have any questions, now is the time to um, raise your hand. Oh. Right, so um, Zavoya, if they have no pattern, like you can't find any pattern whatsoever, it might just mean that there are random sets of numbers and so then you would just make a statement that there is no pattern there's no clear relationship it's just a random set of numbers we do start to as we like move up in mass we do start to learn about specific types of patterns and so we start to sort of be able to identify characteristics of patterns in order to help us figure out will this be a linear pattern will it be a quadratic pattern but if you really cannot find any any relationship and you've tried everything that you know it might just be a random set of numbers but we wouldn't give you a random set of numbers okay if we're testing you on number patterns we're going to give you one that does provide or does come out with a pattern all right so guys now that i've just said the word a linear pattern i think it's important that we do just understand so these both are linear patterns and linear patterns are where we add or subtract the same value each time And so because in the first one, I was adding two every single time, that didn't change. In the second one, I was adding four every single time and that didn't change. These are both what we call linear patterns. And like I've just said, now you do get other types of patterns, which we'll have a look at in a second, that aren't linear, but still have a relationship or still form a pattern. Okay, it's rare that we would give you one that has no pattern. I mean, I suppose we could, but if we're testing you on patterns, we're not going to give you something with no pattern. So, Bisol? Hi, ma'am. Hi. So, ma'am, for the first uh, example, example one, mm -hmm. so the answer would be 2x plus 1, if, if my calculations are correct. Perfect. Using using your rule. Perfect. So let's actually put that there. So guys, if we wanted the rule for this first one, exactly as um, Sabiso has just told us, y is equal to 2x plus 1, or if you're using tn, tn is equal to 2n plus 1. Excellent. Well done. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. So guys, exactly as um, Sabiso has just sort of differentiated rule, description, two different things. And it's important we remember that. All right, I'm hoping we've all got our screenshots. I'm hoping that we all um, have asked or had any questions answered that we may have needed. Um, we're going to do one more and then we'll take a little break. This is a nice fun one and I think you guys have got it. So I'm going to add in a question here. Oh, apparently I'm not. Technology. Give the rule of the. Right, so we're going to try this next one here. I am going to put the actual pattern up. Right, so look at your pattern. I want a description. I want the next three terms and let's see if we can come up with a rule for this pattern. Now remember your rule is how do we get from input to output? So try this one by yourselves. Let's see what we get.
Okay, so guys, all I've done here is I've just put a little reminder of the difference between the two. Describe the pattern. How do we get from one output to the next output? So how am I going from one to eight, eight to 27, et cetera, et cetera? The rule is how do we go from the input value to the output value? It would also help if I could spell things properly here. And just remember, these are all your output values. Your input values are the positions. So first, second, third, fourth, et cetera, et cetera. Well, Cecilia, try unpin and then repin my screen. That should help. If it's still not help, if it's sorry, if it's still not working, let us know. But if you unpin and repin my screen, it should work if the logging out thing isn't working. Sorry, I have to smack my calculator away. Nice one, Cecilia, well done. Morgan, it might be network. Um, Problem. So just remember, everything is recorded. Like that, we've got a couple different descriptions coming in. This is good. I'm going to give you one more minute and then we'll go through this. Then, like I say, we'll take a little break. You guys are doing really nicely. And I'm really impressed at how much we remember from um, our number patterns. So really nicely done, great X. This isn't always the easiest thing to, to do. And so you're doing very, very nicely. Uh, great. It's, I don't really understand what we mean when we say we add and multiply by eight. So if we add eight to one, we get nine. And then nine times eight is a number that is not eight. If we say one times eight, we do get eight. But then eight plus eight is 16 and eight times eight is 64. So just try and be very descriptive when you're describing the pattern because add and multiply by eight is not giving us any of those outputs there. Okay, let's see. So guys, the first thing I always do whenever I get a number pattern, doesn't matter what type of number pattern it is, I don't even think about the questions yet. So I'm not even gonna think about the description, the next few terms, nothing. I just look at the number pattern and I say, well, what, what is happening? Because I can't answer any questions unless I know what's happening. So I always first think, okay, well, am I adding the same thing to get my outputs? Well, if I say one plus seven, I get eight. But in order for me to get 27, I'm feeling my math brain is on holiday with the rest of us. 
and my calculator is also on holiday. So we're all very efficient here. Um, in order for me to get 27, yo, 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 I have to add 19. Okay, so I'm definitely not adding the same thing. In order for me to go from 27 to 64, I have to now add 37. Okay, so definitely not adding the same things. Now I feel a little bit stuck, but okay, let's see. Maybe I'm adding consecutive odd numbers. Well, let's see. So now I go to the next difference. Seven plus what gives me 19? Well, seven plus 12 gives me 19. 19 plus what gives me 37? Hmm, I don't know, plus 18. Okay, so that's still not the same. So exactly as in tunnels they said, this is a slightly more complicated pattern. So what I do is I go back to my original sequence because clearly none of this is giving me something nice that I can work with. And I now go and ask myself, okay, I'm not adding the same thing each time. It's not like I'm adding consecutive odd numbers or even numbers or anything like that. So what on earth am I doing? And so now I ask the question, well, how am I going? Is there any relationship between the input and the output? Can I see a pattern? And some of you have identified it really nicely. So I would ask myself, okay, well, how do I get from one to one? I haven't done anything. So I'd either be squaring it, cubing it to the power of four, something like that, or times it by one. So let's go with squaring. One squared is one. Let's see if it works for two. Two squared is four, not gonna work. Let's try cubed. One cubed is one, two cubed is eight. Okay, so it works for the second one. Three cubed, 27, works for the third one. Four cubed, 64, works for my fourth term. And so sometimes it is a bit of a case of you have to think outside of the box in terms of what you are used to and you need to work from here. So when we go and describe our pattern, I would say that we cube the input number to get the output. Or you can say the term. Okay, so this one is a non-linear sequence because we're not adding or subtracting the same thing each time. We're now using powers or exponents. And so it is a little bit different. And these are the ones we like to challenge you with. So these are the ones that we put towards the end and we like to give you a bit of a challenge. But because we know we can think outside the box, it doesn't have to just be I'm adding or subtracting something. We can now hopefully go and answer these questions. So the next three terms, well, my next term would then be five cubed, which is 125. Then I would have six cubed, which is 216. And then I would have seven cubed, which is 343. So my next three terms would be 125, 216, 343. Now guys, you are welcome to write your answer exactly like that. You don't have to give me the first terms that I gave you. You can just give me the next three terms. There's no need for you to write down what I've already given you. Right, when it, comes for, when it comes to a rule for this pattern, we've essentially already done it. We're now going to take what we know is happening and we're going to put it in a rule. We know that in order for us to get our output value, which, oh, golly, Miss Molly, what we know is y, we have to take the input value and we have to cube it. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We took all of those input values, we cubed them, and we were able to get our output value. Right, so sometimes our patterns are not as straightforward as I'm adding two, I'm subtracting three, I'm adding seven. It's not always that straightforward. And we need to be able to have a look and see, well, how am I getting from one term to the next? All right, now, again, this is not something that I expect you to just know straight away. These are definitely the slightly harder ones, but we will ask you these. And so you need to keep your cubes and your squares in the back of your mind when you're doing patterns because we will ask you these ones. Alrighty. So take your screenshots. If anyone has any questions, now's the time to raise your hand and ask. Otherwise, like I say, we're gonna take a little brain break and then we will carry on. Okay, so guys, exactly there. Since while 
it's okay that we didn't initially realize it. That's cool. But if we keep in the back of the head that squares and cubes are going to come up, it makes our lives a lot easier. Okay, so grade eight, any questions? Otherwise, you're taking screenshots. And then I'm going to go down to our brain break. Nice, alrighty. Ooh. That was crazy. Guys, I love this joke. I also really love cows, like I'm obsessed with cows. So the joke is very much in line with that. But I have this joke up in my classroom. Like I'm, I, I find it hilarious. I have a little chuckle every time I see it. But that is besides the point. Brain break, let's give it a, a good, yeah. Let's try, because English today is Clearly not working. Remember, brain break, I want the value of this last equation down here. And remember, this is solving an equation. We've done solving equations. So we can all do this. There's another car one, and I can't remember it. Uh, it'll come to me. But I do love a good cow joke. Okay, hey guys, brain break. Uh, first person to get it right will explain it for us. I need to do it on one. So let's see. <laughs> Thanks. I kind of want to call my calculator a calculator every time now. And I paint it with cow spots or something. But I feel that might be overdoing it. Since while honestly, the internet, there's no way I'm this funny. I can guarantee that. Um, I also, <laughs> you can tell what my like social media life looks like. I follow a lot of like maths jokes, things on social media platforms. And so that's where I get them from. It's definitely not from me. I'm not that funny. I wish I was, but unfortunately I'm not. Definitely think one of you got this answer before me. So well done. Ooh, see someone. First person to get it right. Bashali, well done. I'm clearly on holiday. My brain's on holiday. Very nice. If you would like to raise your hand and let us know how you got that, you are welcome to. Yeah, since Wallow, I wish I was that funny. I really do. I wish I could just make up jokes on the spot. Sometimes I'm okay with a pun, but um, yeah. But Charlie, you were the first one to get it right. If you want to raise your hand and explain it for us, that would be amazing. Awesome. Should be a little pop up to unmute yourself. Oh, no. Yes. Hello. Here we go. <laughs> oh. uh, so I did 54 divided by 6, which gave me 9. Cool. So, one, so uh, one uh, ice cream cone is equal to 9. Uh, and then I said 9 times 9, which is 81. And 89 minus 81, which gave me 8. So the birthday cake is equal to 8. Uh, and then there's two cakes. Uh, so it's 16 times 16. Good. Which gave me 256. And uh, 264 minus 256, which gave me 8. Good. So uh, there's two cones to the next. So it's uh, 18. 
times 16 uh, plus 4 because there's only 1. Good. Which give me 132. Which gave you? What was your answer? Uh, 264. Wait. Double check. That wasn't what you put in the chat. So 18 times 16 is 288 plus 4 is? Two, uh, 292. Excellent. Well done. Perfect. Now, guys, what was really important was right at the beginning, I love seeing how you guys think about these things because I wouldn't have said 54 divided by 6. I would have just said divided by 3. Either way, you get exactly the same answer. So it makes no difference. It was important, though, to see that this was two ice cream cones. This was one. This was one birthday cake. This was two birthday cakes. Two ice creams, one ice cream. We always need to remember that when we do these. Okay, that's where we often get ourselves caught out. Very nicely done, Vishali. Thank you very much for explaining it for us. So guys, brain break, very nice. I did see another um, few 292s come through, but um, remember first one explained, so well done, but a little English, but well done everyone for giving it a try. Alrighty, we're gonna end off with one more. And this one is pictorial, it's a picture. All right, so. We've got some blocks here. The first thing I want you to do before we do anything is I want you to tell me how many blocks are in picture one, picture two, picture three, because we need that information if we're going to start answering any questions. Make that a touch smaller because I do see the off there. Yeah. Okay. So how many blocks are there in picture one, picture two, picture three? Good. Okay, so we've got five. We separate with a semicolon when we do number patterns. Eight, 11. Now, if we just go and have a look at the picture, hopefully what you can see is that if we take this original shape, which I'm actually just clearly losing my mind. So if we take this original shape and we transfer it, we are actually adding three blocks each time. So here, are my extra three blocks that I'm adding, which is why in my pattern, five plus three is eight. Eight plus three is 11. I'm adding those extra three blocks on the end each time in order to get my next image. So how many blocks, guys, will we need in the fourth image? In the chat, how many am I gonna need in the fourth image? We know what the pattern is. We're adding three. Okay, guys, let's be careful. I've just told you what the pattern is. So all you need to do is you need to say 11 plus three to give you the fourth one, which gives us 14. So there will be 14 blocks in our fourth image. Okay, so let's just be very careful that we're adding correctly. Fourth image will have 14 blocks. Now we've already established what pattern we noticed that we add three blocks as we go up in our pictures. Okay. And so that is really helpful for us because the next question is asking us how many blocks will be in the 23rd image. Now there is no way we're gonna sit here and draw 23 of these pictures to figure that out. We want a shortcut. This is now where our rule comes in. Okay, so the second they give you this like weird big number, you don't want to sit there and try and do it. So now we need our rule. 
So y equals, remember, these are our input values. These are our output values. How am I getting from x to y? I've given you the trick that whatever you add or subtract is your coefficient to x. So we know that we've got 3x. And then we need to see if we need to add or subtract anything. So if I go to my x values, 3 times 1 is 3, but I want 5. So I need to add 2. Let's double check. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 2 is 8. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2 is 11. So we know my rule here is 3x plus 2. And now because I've told you I want the 23rd image, so this must go all the way to 23, I'm giving you what x is. So now all we need to do is we need to take that information and use it according to my rule. So 3 times 23 is a fun number of 69, plus 2 gives us 71, as you have all perfectly said there on the chat. So the 23rd image is going to have 71 blocks in it. And I did all of that without needing to go and draw out 23 pictures because that is a mission and we don't want to do that. Okay, so guys, a number pattern can be a picture, can be numbers. We need to be able to figure out the next couple terms, describe the rule and give a rule so that we can answer and make predictions like we said at the beginning.